In the heavens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed his angels that he had decided to place a vicegerent on earth who would reside there from generation to generation. The angels were not too pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announcement as they were aware that the jinns who existed on earth previously had corrupted the land and caused ample bloodshed. In this video, we will explore the story of Prophet Adam alayhi salam in Islam, from his creation to his eventual redemption. But before we get started make sure you smash that like button, hit at the bell icon and subscribe to our channel for more videos. And, mention, O Muhammad, when your Lord said to the angels, Indeed, I will make upon the earth a successive authority. They said, Will you place upon it one who causes corruption therein and sheds blood, while we declare your praise and sanctify you? Allah said, Indeed, I know that which you do not know. Creation of Adam alayhi salam, the first man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala molded the first man using a handful of clay gathered from various parts of the earth and made him in his picture. Narrations state that due to the different types of clay that were used for the creation of the first man, the children of Adam peace be upon him are diverse in their complexions and other physical characteristics. It is also reported Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him has said that Adam peace be upon him was created at a height of 30 meters. According to a Sahih Muslim hadith, Adam peace be upon him was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Asar on a Friday. The first man remained a mere clay figure for a period of 40 years. Each time the angels passed by the figure, they were overcome with fear. Iblis was the most fearful of the new creation. Consumed by a mixture of curiosity and envy, Iblis would strike the figure which would emit a sound similar to that of striking a clay pot. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Quran, He created humankind from sounding clay like pottery. Angels prostrate before Adam alayhi salam. When it was finally time to breathe the soul into the first man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the angels, when I breathe my spirit into him prostrate before him. The Almighty then breathed the soul into Adam peace be upon him. When the soul reached him, Adam peace be upon him sneezed saying, Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then responded by saying, May Allah have mercy upon you Adam. As commanded, the angels fell in prostration out of respect for the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, Iblis, a jinn, who was also among the angels refrained from following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Iblis, O oh Iblis, what is the matter with you that you did not join others in prostration? He arrogantly replied, it is not for me to prostrate to a human you created from sounding clay molded from black mud. He strongly felt that he was a far superior creation to humankind who was made using mere clay whilst he was made using fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was angered by Iblis response, so get out. You are truly cursed. Iblis then appealed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my Lord. Then delay my end until the day of their resurrection. For allowing me to stray I will surely tempt them on earth and mislead them altogether, except your chosen servants among them. You are of those allowed respite, until the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conceded adding, this is the way, binding on me, you will certainly have no authority over my servants, except the deviant who follows you, and surely hell is their destined place, altogether. It has seven gates, to each a group of them is designated. Having just received the gift of life, Adam peace be upon him witnessed the exchange between his creator and his creation and was overcome with a myriad of emotions. He felt deep love and admiration for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who had granted him life and who had instructed his angels to prostrate before him. He was filled with awe at having witnessed Iblis' disobedience towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Lord's tolerance. Adam peace be upon him was also surprised at Iblis' hatred towards Adam peace be upon him without having any knowledge about him. He realized that Iblis was a creature that was consumed by arrogance and while and understood then that Iblis was his eternal enemy. He knew that Iblis was among the bad and the angels were among the good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then instructed Adam peace be upon him to go to a gathering of angels, and greet them with, as salamu alaykum, peace be upon you. Upon doing so, the angels replied to Adam peace be upon him with, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah, may the peace and mercy of Allah be with you too. When Adam peace be upon him returned to his creator, he said, this is your greeting and the greeting of your children among each other. Adam peace be upon him learns the names of everything, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was keen on making Adam peace be upon him perceive his true identity, and the purpose of his existence, and granting him the knowledge of all things which was a gift that was bestowed to no other creation before. As the All-Knower states in the Quran, he taught Adam peace be upon him the names of everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Adam peace be upon him the power to understand the nature of all creations and to assign each creation suitable names. He also instilled in Adam peace be upon him a love for knowledge and a strong desire to impart knowledge to his offspring. When his creation had learned all that he needed to learn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented him before his angels. Tell me the names of these, if what you say is true? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the angels. Glory be to you. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. You are truly the all-knowing, all-wise, the angels replied, admitting their inability to do so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then turned to Adam peace be upon him, and instructed, a Adam. Inform them of their names. As commanded, Adam peace be upon him recited the names of everything, to the amazement of the angels. Did I not tell you that I know the secrets of the heavens and the earth, and I know what you reveal and what you conceal? The angels then comprehended that Adam peace be upon him indeed had the knowledge of everything and that this was his noblest quality. Adam's peace be upon him knowledge encompassed that of worldly knowledge, knowledge of the Creator, and his creations. Adam peace be upon him was eager to share his knowledge, so he would approach the angels to discuss the way of things with them. However, as is the duty of the angels, they were busy attending to the Lord's bidding. Hence, Adam peace be upon him felt lonely. Thus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to create a partner for him from his ribs. The Creation of Eve One day, as Adam peace be upon him awoke from his sleep, he found a human gazing intently at him with tender eyes. Who are you? He asked the creation. A woman, came the response. Why have you been created? Adam peace be upon him asked. So you can find tranquility in me, she responded. The angels were in awe of this new creature, so they asked Adam peace be upon him, what is her name, Adam? He replied, Eve. They then asked, why has she been named so? Adam peace be upon him responded, because she was created from something living. The Forbidden Tree Adam peace be upon him and Eve lived a life of complete freedom in paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed them to explore heaven and live as they pleased, but there was one exception. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned them against approaching a specific tree, failing which they would be deemed disbelievers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, but come not near this tree or you both will be of the wrongdoers. It was clear as undisturbed water that eating from the specific tree was off limits, but, before long, as it is human nature, Adam peace be upon him forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command. His willpower weakened and his mind changed. This was the opportune moment for Iblis to strike and show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that humans were weaklings after all, and he, Iblis, was the superior being. He was resolute in his mission to lead humans astray from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worship. He began his mission with mere whispers, through which he buried the seed of doubt in Adam's peace be upon him mind. Shall I guide you to the tree of immortality and the eternal kingdom? Iblis asked the pair. He also said, Your Lord did not forbid you this tree save you should become angels or become of the immortals. Swearing by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Iblis added that he was among the sincerest well-wishers for both Adam peace be upon him and Eve. So, the pair were coaxed into disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before he finished consuming the fruit of the forbidden tree, Adam peace be upon him was awash with a sense of shame, sadness, and pain. With a single act of disobedience, both Adam peace be upon him and even became aware of their nudity and they frantically began to pluck leaves to cover themselves. Condemned to Earth Adam peace be upon him and Eve were summoned before their Lord who asked, Did I not forbid you from that tree and tell you that Satan is to you a clear enemy? The pair was forlorn and consumed by guilt. They pleaded, Our Lord. We have wronged ourselves. If you forgive us not and bestow not upon us your mercy, we shall certainly be of the losers. It was indeed too late. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already planned his sentence for the two humans. He expelled Adam peace be upon him, Eve, 
and Iblis to earth where he destined humans to be enemies with Iblis. He said, Descend as enemies to each other. You will find in the earth a residence and provision for your appointed stay. There you will live, there you will die, and from there you will be resurrected. Life on earth. Adam peace be upon him and Eve led a life of hardship on earth. Food did not come easy unlike in their previous abode, heaven, they were compelled to work hard in order to sustain themselves on earth. He was burdened with searching for food, clothing, and shelter for his wife and children. He was also challenged with fighting wild animals who were wandering about in search of a full meal. However, above all, the biggest burden that Adam peace be upon him had to constantly battle was the whispers of Satan. Satan stuck to his word and continued to torment the humans with his evil whispers. Nonetheless, he remained resolute and proved himself to his Lord. It was vital that he thrive on earth and bring forth offspring who would remain steadfast in their assigned duty, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Adam's Elias Salam Children The lonesome existence of Adam peace be upon him and Eve on earth soon changed. They were first blessed with a set of twins, Cain and his sister, and were also blessed with twins the second time, when they welcomed Abel and his sister. The children grew up to be young healthy adults, while the family enjoyed a humble life with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ample blessings. Cain cultivated the land, whereas Abel reared the cattle. Part of Adam peace be upon him and Eve's expulsion to earth was with the aim of populating the land with dutiful humans who worshipped the Almighty. Thus, when the children reached marriageable age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Adam peace be upon him to marry each son to the other's twin sister. There was after all no other family in existence besides Adam's peace be upon him family. Adam peace be upon him did as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bid and instructed his children that they were to marry each other's twin. While Abel was ready to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command, Cain was not too pleased. Whilst Abel was known for his intelligence, obedience, and his readiness to obey the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Cain was arrogant, selfish, and disobedient to his Lord. Cain was unhappy with the command as, according to him, Abel's twin sister was not as pleasing to the eye as his own. He defied Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command as he refused to accept his father's advice. Adam peace be upon him was in a quandary. He was uncertain as to what needed to be done, so he called out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking his assistance. Thus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded that each son offer a sacrifice in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he would favor the son whose sacrifice he accepted. While Abel offered his best lamb to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Cain offered his worst harvest. Therefore, naturally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted Abel's offer, whilst Cain's disobedience towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command and his insincerity in his offering caused his plea to be rejected. Enraged, Cain threatened to kill his brother. I will kill you. He said. Allah only accepts the offering of the sincerely devout. If you raise your hand to kill me, I will not raise mine to kill you, because I fear Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I want to let you bear your sin against me along with your other sins, then you will be one of those destined to the fire. And that is the reward of the wrongdoers, Abel responded with sincerity. Abel was not phased by the threats of his brother, but he made certain that he reminded his brother to not stray from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first murder, the hatred that Cain had towards his brother outweighed all other forms of familial bonds and emotions. The fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishment also failed to arise in his mind. As expected, Cain did not heed the warnings of his brother. He struck Abel with a stone and killed him in an instant. This was the first death and murder in the history of humankind. As time passed, and Abel did not return home, Adam peace be upon him began worrying. He began to look for his son but found no trace. When he inquired Cain about Abel's whereabouts, Cain stated that he was not his brother's keeper nor protector. It didn't take Adam peace be upon him long to realize that his beloved Abel was no more. Adam peace be upon him was consumed with grief. Having murdered his brother, Cain was unsure what needed to be done with Abel's body. He wandered all over, pondering how he could hide the body from his family. As his anger slowly subsided, Cain began to feel remorse for his brother and was overcome with guilt. In a bid to retain the dignity of the deceased, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused Cain to witness the death and burial of two crows. 
Cain watched as the crow used its claws and beak to dig a hole in the earth, push the carcass into it and cover it with sand. Cain followed suit and buried his brother, Abel. Adam peace be upon him lost both his sons and was overwhelmed with grief. Abel was murdered while Cain was under the spell of the devil. He made dua for his son and went on to carry out the duties expected of him. He continued to warn his children and grandchildren of Iblis and constantly reminded them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not be among those who disobeyed him. Adam alayhis salam death, one day, Adam peace be upon him who was gravely ill said to his children, O oh my children, indeed I feel an appetite for the fruits of paradise. Intent on fulfilling their father's request, the children set out to gather the fruits of paradise. On their way, they met with some angels who carried with them Adam's peace be upon him shroud and other materials required for the preparation of a body for burial. The angels instructed the children of Adam to hasten home as their father was about to meet his end soon. So the children returned home with the angels. Upon arrival, the angels took Adam's peace be upon him soul. They prepared him for the funeral, wrapped him in the shroud, dug his grave, and laid him in it. They told the children of Adam, O oh children of Adam, this is your tradition at the time of death. Prior to Adam's peace be upon him death, he reassured his offspring that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not abandon them and continue to watch over and guide them. He also informed them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would continue to send down prophets as a guide for mankind. Following the death of Adam peace be upon him, his son Seth peace be upon him succeeded him. He too was made a prophet and was tasked with the duty of guiding people to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do you think is the most significant aspect of Prophet Adam's Alayhis Salam story that resonates with you personally? If you found this video helpful, make sure to check out other videos on our channel and give this video a big thumbs up also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.